Hello and welcome to the American Society of Regional Anesthesia, Regional Anesthesia and Pain Podcast, Azra Rap. Um, we have a fantastic show today. We are going to be talking about the upcoming Azra Spring Meeting, Azra Pain Medicine Spring Meeting in Las Vegas, Nevada. It is coming around in just a few weeks. We have March 31st through April 2nd in Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Um, that is right around the corner, and I can't wait to go to the meeting. So we're going to talk about that meeting. We're going to talk about the program, and I've got a fantastic panel to talk about some of the really unique things that you're going to want to see. Before we get into it, a couple of reminders here. So if you uh, look up on the screen, if you're watching this, this is the annual meeting, March 31st through the 2nd at Caesars Palace. Make sure you use the hashtag Azra Spring 22. That's going to be the common element for social media, and that's where we're going to put all of this stuff together. So uh, we're going to talk about this program. I'm not going to go into details. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of really important people here to tell you all the details about this meeting. The second thing I want to remind you about is this isn't the only thing going on at the Azra Pain Medicine Society. We have lots of events coming up, so I want to make sure that you highlight this page, Upcoming Events. And look at things like these hot topics. These are online sessions that have phenomenal faculty talking about unique subtopics that may be relevant to your practice. And these are open to all members, so I encourage you to do it. They're focused towards trainees, but that doesn't mean that anybody can't attend. And they are filling up uh, with fantastic lectures for the, throughout the year. We have point-of-care ultrasound courses. We have cadaver courses, lots of really great stuff for this year, and a lot of it in person and a lot of it virtual, so you have plenty of options for anything that you want to do. Without further ado, let me bring the rest of the people on the screen here and... Look at this. We've got Becky Johnson, who is going to be our program chair for this meeting, and then we have two of my fellow co-board members, Sandy Kopp and Nabil El Kasabani. Uh, Dr. Sam Naruz, who's the president of the society, was on here just a second ago, and then he disappeared, so hopefully he'll be able to join us again. Um, Becky, before we take a deep dive into the program, um, I want to mention two different sessions that are really important that people should pay attention to, and I want you to go to the websites that I'm going to put at the bottom of the page. Um, one is the uh, Stump the Chump workshops. The Stump the Chump workshops, there's two of them. It's workshop 21 and 28 if you're looking. These are specialty workshops that allow you to go in and talk to real experts in the field and ans get your questions answered. The things that you have been wanting to uh, find out that they're there for your purpose. So you have experts at your fingertips that you can approach and, and get the hands-on experience for the problems that you have that you're working to solve. So I encourage you to go sign up for those. We've had these for several years now. They're really popular and, and get rave reviews. So I want you to go and uh, sign up for those workshops. The second thing is... We have a faculty development session, and uh, Sandy and Sam, uh, Sam Naruz, who's going to be on here in a second, are going to be doing these uh, mentorship sessions. And I, I, I don't think we've ever done this before. I think this is new. But you basically get a one-on-one -on -one session with uh, people who have had uh, both very diverse and uh, deep careers for a long period of time and can offer tremendous advice on how you can either start your career in academics and private practice or enhance your career if you're in the middle of your career or where to go next if you're lost. So again, sign up for this session. I think you're really going to enjoy this opportunity to speak to them one-on-one -on -one, um, with these people that I'm, I'm lucky to call my friends. Um, so without further ado, let's get everybody back on here. Let me turn this banner off. And let's see if we can keep Sam on here. Hey, Sam, how are you? Hi, everyone. Sorry, I had technical difficulties. And we've got Sabrina Okola with us, too. Let me see if I can get her on. I don't know if she's got her camera or not. But, um, Sabrina, if you're able to turn your camera on, we can have you join us that way as well. But uh, I'm going to start with Becky first. Becky, uh, first off, congratulations. Um, uh, three or four years of hard work are about three or four weeks away now. Um, so you must be really excited about the program. 
I am super excited about the program and super excited for you all to take the time to help me um, highlight the sessions as well. What a great opportunity um, to have uh, two former chairs, our president, uh, board members, and our resident section chair join us today to, to talk about how exciting um, our program in Vegas is going to be. I uh, appreciate that you highlighted some of the opportunities and to help um, potentially reframe so the audience understands uh, the great opportunities in the workshops. Those Stump the Chump workshops are um, a fantastic way to come in, get your questions answered, very approachable faculty. That's one thing that I wanted to highlight about um, the deliberate inclusion of individuals that are super approachable. I remember coming into Azure myself over about 10 years ago, a little bit over, um, and to be able to visit with uh, faculty members uh, such as Dr. Greg Lagori sticks out in my head when I was just a just a baby resident uh, to now to have him still included uh, with me and be willing to um, be a moderator of one of the sessions uh, speaks volumes to how dedicated um, the ASRA members and faculty are. And I hope uh, as a part of the program that every Everybody feels that when they come to Vegas. That is what Vegas is about, is the approachability of the membership and the ability to come before, after, um, throughout the program to those individuals that you really just want to get to know a little bit better or say, I just want to hear what brought you to that part of your regional anesthesia and acute pain practice. So I want to uh, I want to toss it to Sam. Sam, I mean, um, you know, we're coming through, and uh, hopefully at the end of a very tumultuous period of time, and um, I feel like this meeting is um, a, a returning swan song for the society um, of back of a in fully in person meeting, um, really with the opportunity for um, everybody to get back together. Any thoughts on that uh, before we dive into the program a little bit? Yes, uh, first, thanks, uh, Dr. Gupta, for having me uh, joining your group here. It's a, it's a pleasure to be among uh, one of the some of the brightest people in the community. You are right. This is the first fully in-person meeting for the past two years. We had really successful meetings last year, but it was hybrid meetings. This is the first totally in-person meeting. We were very excited about this opportunity. I'm more excited because I know for a fact that Dr. Johnson and her team, they put together an amazing uh, meeting. She will go through it next. But I want to highlight that as the pain medicine meetings are, are special. Uh, I might be biased, but this is true. I have been to meetings everywhere. And uh, the, uh, the network, the connectivity between our members and faculty and volunteers are really unmatched. Uh, I don't see this in other meetings at all. There is an ample opportunity and of mingling with your uh, seniors, with your uh, mentors, with your mentees. Uh, there is tons of time between lectures and panels uh, for more network and even job hunting, if you want to say, it. if you're a resident or a fellow. We have lots of opportunities, meet and greet, you can meet with potential future program directors if you're, if you're a medical student or a resident. Uh, I can keep going on and on. I want to give a chance for everyone, but I'm very thankful for uh, Becky and her team and Sandy for helping a lot with this meeting. And as I said, this will be my first fully in-person meeting, so I'm very excited and a little bit nervous. Yeah. In a good way. <laughs> good nervous. Good nervous. <laughs> so, so Sandy, you've had an opportunity to mentor Becky, and then you know, obviously, call her a colleague now. Um, and and what are you excited about this meeting? I know you've watched her and helped shepherd her through this program. Give me give me one or two things that jump out that you really are excited about doing at the meeting, or a session, or a workshop, or something. This is all Becky's meeting. She has done just a fantastic job with this. I can't even tell you how many hours. She has put into this the amount of work. Um, she 
this this meeting is going to be absolutely fabulous because of all the hard work she's put into this. Um, I'm particularly excited about a couple of the sessions. Um, actually, one of them is one that I'm moderating. Um, I might have had a little bit of begging and pleading to get this one. Um, to work. <laughs> But I really, really am excited for the pro con debates between um, Gene Viscusi, Meg Rosenblatt, Terry Horlocker. I just think that we are going to have, I think that those conversations are going to be absolutely fabulous. Um, I'm going to make sure that um, as the moderator, we keep people on time, we keep them fighting fair. <laughs> and uh, I think. Good luck be, with that. Yeah. Good I luck with that. I think it'll be great super excited for that panel um i think it'll be one of the highlights for sure yeah we've got uh kijin um and kareem uh i've i've done a pro con debate against kareem he's absolutely fabulous he's so yeah. charming. um doing a pro con against kareem is um is is interesting and challenging because he is just an absolutely charming human being um so I, I just think that this is going to be absolutely a fantastic session. I hope to see everybody there. Yeah, I'm in the other pro con that's happening the day before, which also looks to be a great uh, opportunity, except I'm still a little bit um, resentful that Beck me put me up under uh, against Kaiser Any King, which <laughs> um, is just Sorry. mean. That's <laughs> just mean. <laughs> And, and you've I, been I, so nice to me all the time. I just <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll 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 just swallow it and take the take the beating, but all right, we'll we'll do what I can. Kaiser but is uh, another one of those absolutely fabulous, charming human beings. Um, so I mean, how can you be even a mean to her? You can't. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> That'll be so, fabulous. So, Nabil, I'll jump to you. Um, I'm sure you've been, uh, you know, you were obviously ran the meeting last year, the spring meeting, and I'm, I'm, and I know you guided Becky as well through um, what works and doesn't work. Uh, I've got one session of that you're moderating right here on the top of the screen. What jumps out to you? I mean, I know Becky's made some of her own uh, flavor to this meeting, but what jumps out to you at the meeting? Well, you know, a couple of things. First of all, like congratulations, Becky. The the program looks fabulous. Everybody's excited about going back to in-person meeting. Everybody is excited for coming to Vegas. And uh, me personally, uh, I'm very excited about going back and just meeting, catching up with all, with all our friends in person. A um, couple of things I'm excited about, especially in the program, the session that you just highlighted, safety, safety is in the minds of everybody. It's a big concern in our practice. And really, we are just diving into different aspects of safety based on uh, the different practice. But one of the sessions that I feel it's, it's really very near and dear to my heart, it is a um, uh, renal anesthesia and acute pain and how it can really improve the outcome of different procedures. So it is a almost an all-inclusive session. We talk about shoulders, we talk about hips, we talk about knees, and the lineup is fantastic. Okay, we have Anahi Perlis, we have Kareem, we have David Ayan, and uh, it, it's really like the, the faculty, like, you know, as I am looking like you know, over the faculty, really I am humbled to be in the moderator seat and just try to guide the discussion between all these people that I consider them unlucky to put into the league and look up to them. And um, really, I, I am really, really congratulations, Becky. The program is fantastic. One of the things also that I really like about that program that I know that Becky especially, and the entire society is taken to heart, is the diversity of the speakers. So the thing about, like, now you have, like, you know, the old boys club, and it's always the same people, like, you know, on the podium, you're going to find, like, the diversity of the speaker, you're going to find, like, new faces coming up to the podium, you go to the workshops, you're going to meet new faculty. So there is, like, you know, a lot of vibe and energy that I can even feel. It's very palpable and even like you no know, few weeks out from the meeting. So that's um, because of all that, I am really like more excited. This is just some of the reasons why I'm excited about that meeting. 
Yeah, it took me a second to find the session that you were talking about. It was this one right here. Yes. Um, procedure specific anesthesia and analgesia evidence based recommendations. And you guys cover a lot of topics yeah. in one session. Yeah. Um, that's and, a. And, I'm sorry, I didn't mention, uh, it, it is my mistake. I didn't mention uh, Christine Schreiber and Maggie Holtz. Yeah, and I mean, it's a packed true. session. Yeah, and it just it goes to tell you the, the spectrum. So you have, this is not only something that is very uh, inclusive to academic practice, but it's very inclusive also of private practice, the private practice view of how we do things. I really think like, you know, this is going to be a, a great meeting. Now, Becky, I intentionally let everybody do their applause of your program first before I let you talk some more, because I do want to get, recognize all your hard work. T t tell me what, what jumps out at you, because I know there's, there's probably a few things that you felt inspired to change based on your experience of coming to these meetings. Everybody loves a lot of the meetings, but they always wish that they could do something a little bit better. What do you feel like you cleaned up and, and made a little bit more concise for us? Great question, and I just want to um, thank everybody for their kind words. It's not without the support of all of you and support of multiple mentors and, and faculty in ASRA to make this possible. This isn't a one-person show as much as uh, the accolades. Okay, keep coming with the accolades, but <laughs> but um, it wouldn't be for doc if Dr. Nerus didn't give me this opportunity, I wouldn't be sitting here. And so I'm feeling fully supported by that. And his vision is throughout this, as well as the planning committee uh, members, all of you on this uh, call and many others that weren't able to make it today. So what did I change that's a little bit different? Um, your program, Raj, Nabil, your program, they are they were fantastic programs, as was Jamie Barada's. I mean, how do you how do you compete with already great programs? Well, what I did is I tweaked it just a bit. So um, I feel like regional anesthesia and acute pain medicine as ASRA pain medicine has evolved needs to be more inclusive of the pain management focus. And so rather than being very technically focused, meaning this block does that and this block does this, we um, tweaked uh, towards a procedure specific focus, not only with that session that you highlighted just a moment ago, but also with our workshops. So our hands-on workshops have completely changed from being block focused to being these are procedure specific um, analgesic op options that also include blocks for shoulder, hip, knee, abdominal, spine, breast and thoracic with fa faculty that are specifically targeted with knowledge to promote an understanding of how this is practically done and how this is realistically done. There will be um, pre-work for um, attendees that sign up for these workshops so that everybody feels that they have an understanding so that they can come on into these workshops, get their hands on the probe and have the experts show them how to take it to the, different to the next level, which is one of my favorite parts of this program. And Dr. Kijin Chin, who is um, the chair of our workshops has done an extremely immense work to move us into this direction. And I, I cannot thank him enough for um, moving us in that um, vein. And then I do want another moment, just a, a bit of a moment, to talk about the deliberate diversity of the program. Um, thank you for um, giving us this chance to highlight how the approachability of diversity, not only from gender or those characteristics of race that is um, amplified on the program to be more inclusive, but geography as well as um, practice uh, diversity. So um, perhaps we can give Dr. Kopp a moment to talk about our private practice panel because we really want to bring in our private practice practitioners into Azra Pain Medicine part of that approachability aspect, but to know that we built a program that we hope you see how you can practice what you do um, and feel like what, whatever your resources are, you can bring regional to your practice.
Yeah, Sandy, you've had the unique opportunity of going from a truly traditional academic program at Mayo to um, working with these community hospitals um, surrounding Rochester and seeing uh, how uh, you can't do everything you can do at the big hospital and you have to be more creative and often uh, more nimble. Um, talk a little bit about how bringing these private practitioners into the fold and actually onto the podium is so important for this society and its members. Yeah, I think I, I think that's huge, and it's something that I, I wish I would have recognized a long time ago. You know, Becky works in the same in the same settings, and so I think she's done a really good job with this program to bring that home. You know, I think um, if we look at at the the members of Azure Pain Medicine, I think a large proportion of our members. Um, fit into that group of people that don't work in academic medicine, that they're, they're working out in these regional medical centers and, and, and they're, they don't have the resources that we have in these academic centers and especially the resources of, of people, right? Of all of these people to have block, block consultants, block teams, residents to cover the pain service at night, all of these things. Um, and so I think um, I, I think that this program is really uh, designed to help those people to take out of it what they can. Um, it's not all about here, let's put in eight bazillion catheters that aren't going to work in your private practice setting because you have nobody to, you know, you have nobody to manage them overnight. It's about how, how we can take what we do in one place, but maybe tweak it a little bit to make it work for you. And so I, I'm really excited to be a part of, of that. And I, I think I'm, I'm really proud that this program is designed to help those people, because I do think that they are very, um, they're probably the majority of our membership actually. And, and if they're not, they should be. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of anesthesiologists that maybe don't consider themselves primarily regionalists uh, or acute pain physicians, but they do it a lot in their private practice every day because that is um, how, how a practice, a fast-paced practice moves is, um, you know, you do a block on a patient, they get out of recovery faster. Um, and that's an important element of keeping an OR flowing. So there's probably a lot of private practice doctors out there that are doing regional anesthesia, uh, I would bet at higher volumes than some of our academic colleagues um, and, and maybe it, with less variety, but definitely with high proficiency. Um, and so we need to be able to speak to that audience. I agree with you. So I'm excited to see that this is evolving and progressing in our society and, and we're speaking not only to them, but from them. So we're actually getting them to speak back to us about their experience, which I think is so important. And for those of you guys who are, who are interested and are members of the society, um, we have a private practice special interest group um, that's new. And a lot of these people that are going to be on the podium talking are active members in that group, often founding members of that group. And it's a great opportunity to find people who are going through the same challenges as you. But more importantly, to voice your concerns where our society, Azure Pain Medicine, needs to move to uh, fill the needs of the that group of practitioners. So use this meeting as a launching point to meet these people and then follow through with the special interest group afterwards. Um, Sam, one of the things that I know that is on your mind a lot um, during the planning of these meetings is to really round out the meeting so it's not just... Um, uh, lecture, 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 lecture. And art has been a big discussion, art in a lot of different forms. And um, I know one of our sessions is really taking that up um, a really high level. We have an artist coming and joining us at this meeting. You want to talk a little bit about that session? Or maybe, I don't know if you or Becky can speak to that better? I think Becky. <laughs> Becky may know the details better. Yeah, I know. yeah I'll get into that. But um, maybe, uh, Sam, if you would, please, um, will you highlight um, the gift we have of Dr. Levine coming and uh, a bit on your session with her? Yes, we are, uh, we are very happy and pleased that uh, uh, Dr. Rachel Levine accepted our invitation. She will be our key note speaker. And we will have uh, uh, a nice discussion Actually, she's planning only to talk for like 15 minutes and she's opening the floor for discussion for the next half an hour because we figure out that most of the attendees and the audience will have lots of questions. 
we will be this she will be reviewing the most uh, up-to-date data about the opioid crisis especially with the uh, pandemic hopefully we're in the down slope now but uh, unfortunately the two epidemics crossed and it adversely affected the opioid epidemic so all the advances the good advance that we did over the past few years unfortunately they got reversed by the pandemic so she will be addressing the numbers first and then her vision and the strategy uh, going forward so i encourage you to to come prepared with the questions uh we will have plenty of time for the questions and uh, i i feel that this will be a big hit and um i hope you guys will attend and engage in the discussion as much as possible so you talk about the architecture. Yes. Okay. Well, great. I because I I wanted to make sure we highlight. He says that was this opportunity to have the assistant secretary for health come um, and spend time at uh, our meeting um, was is just profound and it's it's a credit to azure pain medicine and our commitment as a society to address those two very important issues that are are. Um, forefront in everybody's mind, opioid crisis and uh, the pandemic and, and the intersection of that. Um, to um, your question, Dr. Gupta, Gupta the um, artist. Um, so Danny Quirk, who is um, a fantastic medical illustrator who um, uses latex to um, showcase anatomy and in particular does these very elaborate um, paintings on um, human flesh uh, or the skin so to speak to create the very anatomy that we target with our blocks and so Danny Cork is going to be joining for um, several sessions but as a big part of what he's doing for our meeting is to be available to individuals to ask questions about how can I best showcase anatomy and get people interested in seeing what's beyond our needle tips? And so in our um, exhibitor sessions, he's actually, we have a, a very um, uh, enthusiastic volunteer who is going to be uh, our model for uh, a couple of days. And right in front of our eyes, Danny Cork's gonna create one of these artworks on a, uh, fellow from um, UNC and with that we're going to be able to see the different stages of how it takes to create this. There's a session in which we are all going to have the opportunity to work with latex paint um, and see what kind of artists we are um, and uh, have a real professional judge. And then probably one of the best um, sessions I think um, to highlight that creative part of all of us is um, that whole concept of how does one describe and visualize pain. And so on Thursday afternoon, we have a special session on visualizing pain, um, scale of um, pain zero to 10. And um, Dr. Stu Grant is gonna be moderating with Danny Cork and uh, Dr. Jeff Gadsden, as well as Dr. Christian Schreiber will be using evidence of, of pain, uh, persistent pain evidence research along with um, descriptions of pain through Danny Quirk's work. And so um, I, I know everybody's gonna be in that session. I know I will be. Yeah, these, uh, this artwork is, uh, it's mind bending. Uh, you know, we see the anatomy in operations all the time, but oftentimes without context. And uh, it seems to the way he does the artwork, it seems to keep the, the, the subtleties, the details of the anatomy in context of the patient, um, which I think uh, we have to be very mindful in pain management. Um, we, we're uh, joined by Kijin Chin. Uh, Kijin, how are you? Um, we were just talking shortly ago about uh, the workshops and the block packs and uh, how they're focused on parts of the body rather than individual nerve blocks so that we get more a global assessment of how to approach a certain type of procedure. Um, any thoughts or comments about the workshops you want to share? Um, I know you guys have done a lot of effort to make them into what they are. 
Yeah, well, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, we're, we're really excited about the workshop offerings this year. Um, you know, Becky's vision for having the so-called block packs, uh, riffing off Rat Pack in Las Vegas was a great <laughs> idea. I think, you know, what we all want is to solve clinical problems. And, you know, we're often presented with a part of the anatomy or a particular surgery on a body site that we need to treat. And so what we really want to know is the techniques that we can use um, to address that rather than studying the blocks in isolation. So I, I, I'm very excited about this. The other thing that we've done, which, uh, you know, participants of science workshops will get to see is for the first time we've put together a very comprehensive package of learning materials, which will help people to both come to the workshop prepared, but also to go home and review stuff um, to cement what we've demonstrated and talked about. And among that, we have uh, some MCQs, but also uh, case scenarios to provide a framework and context for discussing how you can utilize these blocks. And so with all of that, you know, I think it's shaping up to be one of the best conferences in terms of uh, workshop learning that we've had for a long, long time. So, um, yeah. Really definitely increases the value of those workshops. You know, people often ask about what is the value of going to these workshops and having that material. We've seen that in the point of care ultrasound course that having that pre-learning material enhances the hands-on learning, uh, both for you as an individual, but also as a team, whoever's together, you're already a ahead of the game by the time you get to the workshop. And I think that's really important. One other thing I want to highlight, and we didn't talk about it earlier, was um, t talk about where pediatrics is fitting into the workshop a little bit differently this year? Uh, so uh, as far as pediatrics, uh, we have um, provided some interactive sessions where uh, doctors Bereski and Bishwas and Suresh will be uh, working through uh, pediatric focused problems, um, providing demonstrations, specific uh, problem-based learning discussions of blocks that are really important to know, as well as um, how we can adapt these, these popular new fascial plane blocks in a way that will advance the care and treatment of pain for pediatric patients. Yeah, I think that that's a growing field, and there's definitely interest in um, sections of the population of anesthesiologists where uh, we're realizing that we're underutilizing regional anesthesia for pediatric patients, and I think it's really important that we engage in that group of people, and it's great to see that. Um, uh, Becky, I'm going to toss it back to you. Uh, any other really important thing, sessions that you want to highlight at this meeting that you want to make sure people know about? I, I want to make sure we respect people's time. We'll wrap this up in a few minutes, so I want to make sure you hit the highlight. Okay, I can't. Uh, it's like picking your favorite uh, animal. <laughs> well, they have to. They have to come to the meeting to see the uh, the rest of the good stuff, right? I see you've got pages of notes there, and I'm not going to let you go through all of them just yet. And we can, you know, if you you can talk about them on social media, text people yeah. about what to, that they should follow you on that and see what you're excited about. But I want you to just give them a teaser on it now. Okay. Well, the other thing is to make sure and highlight every on this uh, on this podcast is that's exactly the session I want to go to but uh, in all seriousness I think um, I think it's important to highlight how much we've included resident and fellow programming with uh, some specific uh, mindful focus on bringing back um, the fellow and resident workshop and a, a full dedicated yeah. um, workshop to to include um, the next generation of of those that are going to be taking care of us as well as um, promoting our specialty and advancing our practice. And so I want to emphasize with, with the time um, that, that that is included as well as um, a meet and greet and networking opportunities and mentorship opportunities, specifically um, with Dr. Nehru's and COP, other ASRA board members, including Dr. Meg Rosenblatt, who is um, specifically opening um, the doors to inclusion of our um, our um, individuals, not only uh, fellow and residents, but also private practitioners that just, they want to have um, more information on how they can get involved and advance their career. 
Yeah, I think that, um, you know, as we've come to appreciate the need and the desire for in-person meetings, um, the, we're, we're really going to capture that during this session. And uh, I hope I hope that people are um, feeling free to come. They're feeling ambitious to come to the meeting. But when you come, engage, be there, talk to us, find us say hello to us in the hall. I think, are we still doing the stickers, the you can hug me stickers kind of thing? Are we going to do that this year where I feel comfortable? You can come say hi and, and, and give me a hug. I, I don't know if we're doing that or not, but we should. Um, but give us a hug. Come, come say hi to us. Um, I think we all like each other. Most. I'll, I'll show you my sticker. <laughs> Sandy, Sandy, you're going to get a hug. One way or another, you're going to get a hug. N N Nabil will take all my hugs. <laughs> I think the best group there is just uh, speaking, like, this is a display. Just come give all the hugs to us. How's that? <laughs> we're we're going to have to have somebody stand next to Becky just to be her hug translator, you know, just... Just to take the hugs for you. Yes. But the feeling will be there, Becky. The feeling will be there. No meaning to bodyguard. There you <laughs> well, anyway, we, we are excited to see everybody. We're excited to see everybody in person. I think we all uh, recognize the need for Zoom meetings and online sessions and virtual things, and we all made it work when it was hard. But really, it was no replacement for um, seeing each other in person, um, networking with people, getting that mentorship, going to those hands-on workshops having the dialogue at the interactive sessions. There's so many opportunities. And the reason we didn't go through it all is because there's too many things. Um, they're, they're, you know, highlighting one uh, really does an injustice to so many other ones that are so great. So go to the website, azra.com. You can look at the entire program down to the individual details, down to the individual instructors and f uh, speakers. Um, I encourage you to do that. Uh, register for the meeting and follow the hashtag, hashtag Azra Spring 22. That's um, where the conversation will be starting um, online before the meeting, leading up to the meeting, during the meeting, and even after the meeting, so that you can stay connected to these people. Um, I, I love everybody on this call. I love all these people. I think I can't wait to see you guys in Las Vegas. I'm so excited for your meeting, Becky. I think it's going to be fantastic. And um, last word goes to Becky. Anything else you want to say to anybody before we wrap up? Just a huge thank you um, to everyone on this podcast, everybody that took the time to uh, join us this evening, um, and um, to all the Azra staff that are making this possible. I cannot tell you what a bunch of hardworking group of individuals to bring this to you and, and how grateful we are all um, for Azra Pain Medicine and the family that uh, makes it all happen. So thank you for the opportunity and, and Dr. Gupta, your ability to do these podcasts and, <laughs> and get, get, get us out and to, um, to bring us um, and hopefully make me seem a little bit more approachable is, <laughs> is, is just a just you're a miracle worker, so thank you. Uh, oh, you're so kind. Um, so everybody, go to azra.com, register for the meeting if you haven't, sign up for the workshops, go find the, the those little gems, you know, stump the chomps and the faculty development sessions. Um, you, you're going to miss out if you don't go to attend those. And I can't wait to see you guys in just a few weeks. Um, everybody be rested because I don't think we'll get sleep for about four days. So um, I look forward to it. Bye, everybody. Thank see you. See you so soon. Thank you guys. See you soon. Bye.